dig your hand in the land and listen to my story. Feel the cotton, wheat, and corn, the riches and the glory. Feel the sweat and strain of those who worked before me. Dig your hand down in the land. Dig your hand in the land. Touch the toil and sorrow in the soil where the greenbacks never grow on what I borrow. Dig down and tell me where's my seed for tomorrow. Dig your hand down in the land. The small working farmer earns his living on the land. He works the soil to feed and clothe this country, and he buys much of the nation's goods. One fourth of the American people live by the land. The small farmer has a big stake in the life of America. It's a way of life, and if you don't like it, walk away right away. If you do like it, you can't walk away. I don't care what you do, you can, you can go out, you can be the road commissioner or anything else, but you can't walk away from getting on a, getting on a tractor or doing something on a farm once in a while. You can't, uh, it's, it's the way it is. When you get done at the end of the day, you look back and uh, you say, gee, I think I did a pretty good job planting so many acres, you gathered so many bales of hay, you milked so many cows, and you were proud of what you did. My father was a farmer. His father was a farmer before him. And it's in their blood. You know, and I had three sons, and they we lived next door to my father. And all three of them, it's in their blood. They still love farming. They all have herds, but they all have second jobs because they can't just do farming. I, I think, you know, there's a tremendous amount of satisfaction about getting up in the morning and planting a seed and seeing it grow. And it's, uh, it isn't much more to that. got out of school, 100 bushel of corn, to the acre was a big yield of corn. Now, now they're up with the possibilities of four and 500 bushel to the acre. Wow. Not on all ground, but on some ground. So it, the technology is, it's, it's two-sided in a way, I mean. We did a lot more trial and error, and we talked to our neighbors, but now, your neighbors are much further away uh, because of, uh, of technology. And uh, I think that at some point, I think we became a closer knit community. Yeah. But I, I did do all the accounting and, and checking, writing, etc. 
it was different. It was the, the, the wife's job was to do the books, take care of the house, and to help the husband. The husband's job was to work outside. Right. Well, Wayne's father, too, was Frank Calvert. When he was supervisor of the town, he was wonderful. Very active in our church and also Farm Bureau. So he encouraged Jack and I, who were recently married and had the little children, that sure, you can come to Syracuse with us, get the grandparents to take care of the kids and come on. I can see my grandmother, my, my grandfather's wife, my mother's mother, short little person. She'd have breakfast on the table at 7 o'clock for whoever came in the door and it might be five and it might be ten. Noon time it was a meal. It wasn't a lunch at noon time there. It was a noon time meal. And again, it might be five, it might be ten, it might be fifteen, but there was always more than enough on the table for everybody. Night you had a light meal. But it, she would think nothing of that, take care of all the book work, because they had a farm and a creamery, so it was doubled up. And she always had time to do stuff, and she always had time to take care of us. And you wonder how you wonder how they did it. I, I, I do. There was no television or telephone. Right? No, there was telephone, <laughs> but no television. She probably didn't show the couch and play with her, with her cell phone, did it? Mm. <laughs>